a bit flock, I'm going to show images of Kortsfeld Jacob disease. And there are some people who think that because Dr. Jacob did so much more than Dr. Kortsfeld, it should be renamed. But that's a different discussion. The bovine spongiform encephalopathy variant is also known as mad cow disease. And this is not a mad cow, but a happy cow. Kortsfeld Jacob disease is a prion disease with rapidly progressive dementia that's usually fatal within a year. And the most common form is the sporadic form with involvement of the cortex, basal ganglia, and telomere. And these structures have high signal on flare and diffusion weighted images, and they do not enhance on post contrast images. The bovine spongiform encephalopathy variant, Kortsfeld Jacob disease has often hyperintensity in the pulvinar or the entire dorsomedial thalamic nuclei. This is called a hockey stick sign. And initially it was thought that about 90% of the bovine variant had these signs, but retrospectively it was much lower. In the sporadic form, there is extensive cortical involvement often asymmetrical, with sparing of the perirolandic area. And in this drawing, you can see a summary of the findings in sporadic Kreutzfeldt-Jacob disease, with sometimes also cerebellar atrophy, but if there's really restrictive diffusion in the cerebellum, you can think of the very rare Brownwell-Oppenheimer variant, and these patients usually present with gait ataxia. And as already mentioned, the pulvinar and hockey stick sign is more in favor of variant than of sporadic Kreutzfeldt-Jakob disease. A prion is an infectious particle that does not contain DNA or RNA. It's proteinaceous and located on the cell surface. And the normal prions are recycled by endocytosis. And if you have one misfolded prion, it can cause the other prions to misfold as well. And when they um, go back to the extracellular space, this is how the prions can spread in tissues. The exact mechanism why a prion misfolds is not known. This is the normal structure of a prion with two spirals and a very long unstructured terminal. What is known is that copper plays a key part in the folding of this prion. So there are many research articles looking into the copper metabolism. And there has even been one case report of a patient with both Wilson's disease and Kreutzfeldt-Jakob disease. To make the diagnosis of Kreutzfeldt-Jakob disease, you need two out of four clinical signs. And for probable Kreutzfeldt-Jakob disease, at least one positive diagnostic test, such as abnormal EEG. You can detect abnormal protein in the CSF, or you have to have an abnormal MRI that we just discussed. And I want to make a few remarks about this 1433 protein that plays a part of this pathway that we're going to look into more detail when we will discuss tumors, especially the pilocytic astrocytoma. And the 1433 protein is highly conserved during evolution, meaning it's important. And it binds to more than 100 different other molecules that are all involved in apoptosis, mitosis, meiosis. It's located in the cytoplasm, organelles, and membrane. And when the neurons die, and in Kreutzfeldt-Jakob disease, there's neuronal death and reactive astrocleosis. If the neurons die, this 14.3.3 protein goes up in the CSF. But since it is a marker of neuronal death, you can also see it in, for example, stroke or encephalitis. So it's not specific for Kreutzfeldt-Jakob disease. The cause and the mechanism of the restricted diffusion in Kreutzfeldt-Jakob disease has long been unclear. And there was a very nice article this year in the Journal of Neurological Sciences, 
where they had two patients with Creutzfeldt Jacob disease, both imaged a few months after onset and one the day after death and one the day before death. And you can again see the sparing of the periolandic area. And they correlated the perimortem MRI with the macroscopy and the histology. And for the histology, they had an automatic detection of the spongiform changes indicative of the vacuolization of the neurons. And they named this the spongiform change index. And the restricted diffusion corresponded to the vacuolization, to the ratio of neurons and astrocytes, and to the amount of infiltration of the macroglia monocytes macrophages. The regions that have restricted diffusion can change in the course of the disease. This 64-year-old male presenting with rapidly progressive dementia was diagnosed with creutzfeldt jakob disease and because of the pulvinar involvement they thought it was variant, so the bovine uh, creutzfeldt jakob disease. And they did some other examinations such as the tonsillar biopsy that were more in favor of sporadic creutzfeldt jakob disease and on follow-up MRI his pattern had changed a little bit more towards the sporadic creutzfeldt jakob disease. In the differential diagnosis, you can think of the diseases that got us here, such as Wilson and mitochondrial diseases, such as Lee syndrome. You can think of extrapontine asthmatic demyelination with high signal in the basal ganglia. If there is cortical involvement in the sporadic variant, you can think of a perineoplastic limbic encephalitis. Or you can think if there is both cortical and basal ganglia involvement of hypoglycemia in adults. And we're going to look at that in the next vlog.